Hello and welcome to Space Engine. I have a suggestion from a user who suggests, here's one that I'm deeply curious about. What if Betelgeuse goes supernova? How does it affect the solar system and Earth? This is kind of a big discussion in astronomy. Uh, when will Betelgeuse go supernova? Because it is a dying red supergiant. Now, Betelgeuse is pretty easy to find. If you actually go to the Orion constellation, it's actually one of the brightest stars, which is right here. And in this game, it sits 427 light years away. Let's go ahead and go over there. So here is Betelgeuse, a large, dying red star. A lot of astronomers kind of predict that this star will potentially die within the next 100,000 years, but a lot of people say that there's actually been signs that this star is about to go supernova, probably within our lifetime. Some people even say it's already gone supernova. The light from the explosion just hasn't really traveled to the sun. But the star is pretty far away from us. On a galactic scale, it's pretty much in our neighborhood. But in terms of the actual distance between Betelgeuse and the sun, it might not have any significant effects. But let's go ahead and go to Universe Sandbox 2 and figure this out. Yeah, all right, hello and welcome to Universe Sandbox 2. So, according to Space Engine, the star is 427 light years away. According to the Wikipedia article on this star, however, it is actually 643. I don't know if that's an inaccuracy with Space Engine or if it's something on this Wikipedia article that's inaccurate or if there's like some kind of debate of how far it is. I'm not really too sure, but we're going to go ahead and go with the Wikipedia article's uh, distance and place it 643 light years away. Let's go ahead and drop in our sun. Go ahead and just pause the simulation. So let's just drop in our sun as a still object. And very, very, very far away, we have Betelgeuse right here. We will go ahead and drop this. That is quite the distance. Let's see. Okay, 644, that's the closest I can actually manage to uh, place this. So there we go, there is Betelgeuse. Very, very large, very, very bright star. Let's go ahead and put our sun next to it for comparison. Quite a bit bigger, but it's also an expanded red supergiant. But it's apparently 8.9 masses of our sun. So I assume the next step is literally just go to powers and set it to explode. Now it's going to explode. Let's go back to our sun. And let's add in Earth. One astronomical unit away. There we go. Now we have Earth sitting at the distance it normally sits away from the sun. Interestingly enough, Earth appears to be illuminated by Betelgeuse. I think that's actually a bug in the game and that should not actually be happening. But uh, that's kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and make sure that we are in the Goldilocks zone. We certainly are. Everything seems correct. I guess what, we, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and land on Earth. Pause the rotation because we don't really need that. Land on Earth. And where is Betelgeuse? Ah, there it is. And let's go ahead and hit play. Oh, it's still rotating. Okay, I guess we can't do that. We'll just look at, uh, there it is. We'll look at it from this angle. There we go, that's better. And let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit. So we're currently 200 days in and we don't see any sign of the actual supernova explosion yet. Not with our naked eye anyways. Oh, there it is. You can actually see the uh, bright supernova. It's actually visible now. And it is expanding pretty quickly, but this is currently 60 years of expansion. As you can see, it's pretty much as big as Pleiades right here. And pretty soon it'll probably overtake that, even though it would actually be in the Orion constellation, nowhere near Pleiades. And 300 years later, 
you can actually see that it's actually taken up a pretty he healthy portion of our sky. In fact, if we compare it to our sun, which I don't know where our sun went. Did I actually place Earth as an orbiting object? <laughs> I don't think I did. Not unless the sun's actually traveling. No, I did not actually place Earth as an orbiting object. That's kind of weird that it, oh, it must have like flown past the sun at some point. Okay, so here we go. Now we have Earth placed again properly. And there is the supernova remnant. As you can see, it is basically as bright as the sun in our sky. Let's go ahead and resume the simulation. Okay, let's go ahead and make that not rotate. It's still flashing a lot because of the uh, sun's light, so I'm going to go ahead and just change this to studio lighting. There we go, much better. And as you can see, we are currently almost 1500 years into the supernova and it's still expanding. It has not quite reached our solar system yet. We are now 8,000 years into the future. Let's go ahead and zoom out and look at the supernova. It's still pretty far away, but this would be probably our first detection of actual charged particles actually hitting our solar system. Now, I do think the supernova is a little bit exaggerated, only because it's currently 11,000 years into the future. And I don't think it would be this bright this long, because Betelgeuse, while it is a rather huge star, it's not really that big of a star. And here we are, almost 18,000 years, now 18,000 years, moving on to 19 and then 20,000 years into the future, and the supernova, I think it's safe to say, has officially collided with our solar system. But the effects on Earth are probably very minimal at this point because the entire outer shell or mass of the star is kind of just ejected out into such a large volume at this distance that it's not really going to have any direct effect on our planets. If anything, these kind of excited particles might cause uh, some potential for auroras, maybe some better auroras, something like that, more exaggerated auroras, or really just be a pretty light show in our night sky. Um, but at this point, currently 30,000 years into the future, the supernova would probably start to dim and would not be this bright anymore. Because Betelgeuse, while it is a very, very large star, it's not really that massive. It's predicted to be, at least in this game, around 8 to 9 times more massive than our sun. So over this large volume, I think it would actually probably start to cool at this point. The supernova would probably start to lose its energy, but in this game, I don't know if the supernovas actually have any effect on their... Uh, power. I think they're actually pretty consistent when they spawn and then despawn. So this is probably going to go for a good 50,000 years and then just disappear. But it's not going to have actually any effect on Earth other than a pretty, pretty light show in our night sky. So let's go ahead and zoom in and let's clear out Earth and the sun so we can kind of watch the supernova itself dissipate. It's a remnant. We got a remnant over here which looks like it is a neutron star. Does not look like it actually became a black hole, which is understandable because, like I said, Betelgeuse is not that massive of a star, of a star and that dissipated pretty quickly. <laughs> but as you can see, there are clouds and remnants which would actually become, as it cooled, interstellar dust, which would eventually condense and become new stars. That's just that. Betelgeuse will become a pretty nice show in our sky sometime in the future, but I don't think it's actually going to have any significant effect on our solar system. Anyways, if you guys liked the video, please subscribe, and until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.